Hello everyone, today we will be covering Lady Lazarus by Sylvia Plath. It's a story of a woman who seems to be troubled by her life. The tone of the poem is very melancholic and talks about the times when she attempted suicide. Sylvia Plath was born in 1932 and died in 1963. She just lived for 30 years. She was a great American poet, novelist and short story writer. Her pen name was Victoria Lucas, and she's best known for her confessional poetry. Confessional poetry was an artistic movement in post-war 20th century America. It deals with the taboo topics such as suicide, addiction, and mental health. The poem was published in the year 1965. It deals with the themes of death, depression, oppression. Its meter is iambic trochaic. The title is an allusion to the biblical character Lazarus of Bethany, who Jesus raised from the dead. I have done it again. One year in every ten, I manage it. The speaker begins by saying that she has again repeated her action. She admits that she has tried to die once every decade of her life. A sort of walking miracle, my skin bright as a Nazi lampshade, my right foot a paperweight, my face a featureless fine Jew linen. Now she compares herself to a Holocaust victim. She considers herself a walking miracle for attempting suicide and always escaping. She compares her skin to a Nazi lampshade. This is significant because it is rumored that the Nazi people used the skin of the Jews to make lampshades. The speaker then compares her right foot to a paperweight. This conveys her emotional suffering. She further says that she is featureless, which suggests she feels lost in the crowd, without any identity. She even compares her face to a fine Jew linen. Jew linens were used to wrap the body of Lazarus and Jesus before their burial. All these horrific comparisons suggest that the speaker already feels dead. Peel of the napkin, oh my enemy, achieve I terrify, the nose, the eye pits, the full set of teeth, the sour breath will vanish in a day. So the lady now directly addresses her audience and asks them to look at her for who she really is. She calls them her enemy and asks if she terrifies them. Then she describes herself as having a prominent nose, eye pits and teeth that are prominent in decaying body. Soon, soon, the flesh, the grave cave, eight will be at home on me. And I, a smiling woman, I am only 30. And like the cat, I have nine times to die. So the lady continues her description of physical decomposition, revealing her disappointment for being alive. She's a woman of just 30 with an outward smile to fool the people. Then she compares herself to a cat and boasts that like the cat, she has nine chances to die. This is number three. What a trash to annihilate each decade. What a million filaments. The peanut crunching crowd shows in to see. The lady now reveals that she has tried to attempt suicide for the third time and is frustrated for not being able to successfully do it. Now she shifts her focus on the people and criticizes them by calling them peanut crunching crowd, which suggests that the crowd is there just to make a spectacle of her. Them unwrap me hand and foot, the big striptease. Gentlemen, ladies, these are my hands, my knees. I may be skin and bone. The crowd unwraps her clothing and she's forced into an imaginary striptease where she becomes an object of spectacle for the crowd. She notices her hand and flesh, realizing she's still alive. Nevertheless, I am the same identical woman. The first time it happened, I was 10. It was an accident. The second time, I meant to last it out and not come back at all. 
The lady now says she is the same woman she was before. She now starts giving account of her suicide attempt. The first time it was an accident and she was only 10 years old. But the second time it was intentional and she regrets it was an unsuccessful attempt. As a seashell, they had to call and call and pick the worms off me like sticky pearls. She elaborates during her second attempt, she kept herself confined in a seashell, trying to keep the crowd away and die. But somehow she was saved from her doom. She imagines had she died, they would have picked worms off her like sticky pearls. Dying is an art, like everything else. I do it exceptionally well. So the lady declares dying is an art, like anything else. Probably she wants to say that if life is art, then death must be an art too. She turns her death attempt into art and feels she is exceptionally well at doing it. I do it so it feels like hell. I do it so it feels real. I guess you could say I have a call. It's easy enough to do it in a cell. It's easy enough to do it and stay put. She claims that the thoughts of death always rampage her mind and it turns her head into hell. And it's a real place for her. She feels death is her call. It suggests she has no purpose in life but to die. It's theatrical come back in broad day. To the same place, the same face, the same brute. A mute shout, a miracle. That knocks me out. There's a charge. The lady says that the hardest part after an unsuccessful death attempt is facing the crowd again. This appears to her a theatrical process where nothing is real but a forced act, where she will return to the same place, faces and people who will mock her and stare at her in disdain. There's a charge for the eyeing of my scars. There's a charge for the hearing of my heart. It really goes. And there's a charge, a very large charge for a word or a touch or a bit of blood or a piece of my hair or my clothes. The lady feels like she's in a circus where she's an object for everyone to gaze upon her sufferings and enjoy themselves. She now wants to put a charge if people want to see her scars. They have to pay to hear her heartbeat and they have to pay a huge amount of money if they want her to speak, touch or take a bit of her blood, hair or clothes. So so, here doctor, so here enemy. Here is a German word for Mr. or so. She addresses a Nazi figure, a doctor and enemy. During the Holocaust, the Nazi doctors performed a lot of cruel experiments on Jewish people. Millions of Jews were placed in gas chambers and crematoriums, and many were burned alive. The lady imagines that she is burning along with the Jews. I am your opus. I am your valuable, the pure gold baby that melts to a shriek. I turn and burn. Do not think I underestimate your great concern. The lady now uses various metaphors to put her point across. She compares herself to an opus, a valuable thing, a pure of gold baby, indicating she is indeed valuable for some people, but only as an object. But any work of art melts down to nothing someday and starts burning. She suggests that her death too would be nothing more than watching a beautiful piece of jewelry burn to the people around her. Ash, ash, you poke and stir, flesh, bone, there's nothing there. A cake of soap, a wedding ring, a gold filling. So the lady again mentions the Holocaust metaphor here. She imagines a Nazi looking through a crematorium. There's only ash and ash left behind with no traces of flesh or bone. The Nazis were known to use the remains of dead bodies to make soaps. They also used to search for gold fillings and jewelry that couldn't burn in the fire. Hear God, hear Lucifer, beware, beware. 
Now we can feel the tone of the speaker change and it turns revengeful. She asks God and demons to beware. Out of the ash, I rise with my red hair and I eat men like air. Lady Lazarus imagines that she has been burned to death, but like a phoenix, rises from the ashes. Phoenix is an immortal bird that perishes in its flame, but rises again from its ashes to start a new life. The lady too is rising, capable of devouring men by simply breathing them in. The poem is quite ambiguous, but one thing is clear that the speaker is in profound suffering caused by living in patriarchal society and she wants to get rid of it. I hope you like the explanation. If you have any questions, feel free to mention it in the comment box. Thank you so much for watching.